On day one, I spawned in as a Pokemon Creeper. Creeper, Creeper. Oh, <coughs> Ooh, thank goodness. I was worried for a second I'd only be able to say my own name. That takes some of the sting off being a baby with a five hearts. I checked my inventory and found that I had a Pokedex guidebook. This would help me recognize all the other Pokemon I encountered. I looked at my surroundings. I was in some kind of forest. Not quite the Kanto region, but I could still explore. Further into the forest, among some tall grass, I discovered some more creeper Pokemon, just like me. Creeper, creeper. Oh, I guess you guys aren't so talkative. That's fine. I'm sure I can find a trainer who will talk to me. But instead of a friendly Pokemon trainer, instead, a really scary bug-type Pokemon called a Death Worm popped out of the ground. Let's get out of here, guys. Creeper, creeper. We scattered off into the forest to avoid the Death Worm. I hid out behind some trees for the rest of the night. On day two, I ventured out of my hiding spot, convinced that the death worm was gone. I hope I don't run into one of those again. Guess it isn't easy being a creeper Pokemon. But at least I wasn't alone in being a creeper Pokemon. While I was wandering around the forgotten forest, I found an evolved creeper Pokemon. Oh wow, is that what I'm gonna look like when I evolve? I couldn't be more excited. Creeper, creeper. Well, even if I'm a baby creeper Pokemon, at least I can talk. But I couldn't stand around for long. A deadly fire-type Pokemon, the Cockatrice came out of the trees and attacked. It breathed a jet of fire onto my new evolved creeper friend, destroying him in an instant. And if it could do that to an evolved creeper, I'd be in real trouble. I ran away as fast as I could. Later, I arrived in the lush red desert, far, far away from the Cockatrice and the Death Worm. Here, I could maybe build myself a home. Let's get building. I found some trees and knocked them down, collecting enough wood to make myself a wooden pickaxe and a wooden sword. These are pretty useless, but I guess everyone has got to start somewhere. With my extra wood, I started building my own wooden base to give me shelter from the elements. It felt nice to finally sleep indoors for once. On day three, I went out to the meadows, wondering if I could beat some more Pokemon who wanted to come stay at my base. Instead, I found something even cooler, a Pokemon trainer. I ran over to him, so excited to finally have someone I could talk to. Hey, hey, I'm Zozo. I'm a creeper Pokemon. It's so cool to meet you. Oh, wow, a Pokemon that can talk. You don't see that every day. I haven't seen a Pokemon trainer here yet either. Maybe we should team up. I'd love to, but I think I might need to become a more experienced Pokemon trainer before we can truly team up. But when I get there, I'll know where to find you. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it was a start. I started to head back to my base and used my wooden pickaxe to dig up a bunch of stone, which I used to improve my base and build myself a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. Before the day was out, a Pokemon called a Zoglin attacked me, and I was able to easily defeat it with my stone sword. After I defeated it, it dropped some rare candy on the floor, and I quickly collected it. This candy will come in handy later. From day four to day five, I woke up and felt ready to eat that delicious rare candy I'd collected from the Zoglin the previous night. It's been a long week. I think I've earned a little treat. The second I ate the rare candy, I felt myself evolving and getting stronger. I got bigger. I now had 30 hearts and a brand new attack to use on enemy Pokemon, Fire Breath. Whoa, it looks like I'm a fire type Pokemon too. I spent the rest of the day in the Mojave Desert, which was even hotter than the one around my base. It was sandy everywhere, so I collected some sand blocks to use later. Then I ran into a sandwich. Hey there, little creeper Pokemon. I actually saw a few more of your kind not far from here. You should go see them. So I did. I searched around until I found a little group of creeper Pokemon just like me. I was so happy. Creeper, creeper. Yeah, yeah, Creeper Creeper. How about you guys come and stay at my base? Us Creeper Pokemon should stick together for safety. We returned to my base in the lush red desert and found that a wither was waiting outside. This wasn't good. Stand back, guys. I'll deal with this. I ran in and used my new flame breath to destroy the wither. Being a fire type Pokemon was a lot of fun. From day six to day eight, I met up with the Pokemon trainer again, and we went exploring together, searching for some food. And not long after finding some, we went into a nearby underground cavern to do a little bit of mining. It's super dark in here. Don't worry, trainer, I can light the way. I breathed a jet of fire and led up our way, seeing some iron ore in the blocks beneath us. I grabbed my stone pickaxe and started mining until I collected some ore. We built a furnace in the underground cavern and used the ore to create an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I'm stronger than I've ever been. 
With our new equipment in hand, we went to the oasis to relax and spend some time in the sun next to the nice cool water. But not everything was so peachy in the oasis. We were suddenly attacked by a giant monster known as the Hydra. Even with all my new equipment and my fire-breathing power, I couldn't hurt him at all. Get out of here, Zozo. I'll take care of him. You need to get to safety. So I did, because it was all I could do. My Pokemon trainer and the Hydra fought until, in the end, neither of them remained. No! I started heading back alone. I felt so terrible. I'd lost everything. But on the way back, I ran into a friendly Miramax queen. Hello, little creeper Pokemon. Hey, sorry if I seem a little down right now. I just lost a friend of mine. Goodness, you can talk? That's incredible. I didn't know creeper Pokemon could talk. Me neither. I might be the only one. Well, if you lost your friend, perhaps I'll come stay with you. You shouldn't be alone on a night like this. I would love that, Mermex Queen. The Mermex Queen and I returned to my base, and I created a new room for her to stay in. It was nice to finally have someone to stay with me who could actually talk. From day 9 to day 10, I woke up to find someone waiting outside my base. It was a huge, scary-looking Dread Knight, and he was here for me. Who... who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. I'm the strongest Pokemon gym leader in the overworld. And that Hydra you and your friend destroyed? That was one of my prized Pokemon. It destroyed my friend. And it attacked us first, too. How could you blame us for what happened? Don't pity yourself. Not yet. When I'm done with you, you're going to have something to really pity. Mark my words, you sad little creeper Pokemon. I'm going to get you. And then he was gone, leaving me confused and afraid, not knowing what would happen next. From day 11 to day 12, I was woken up by the Mermex Queen. She seemed incredibly excited to see me. Zozo, I know that losing your friend was very hard for you, so I made you something that might help you process what happened. Come and see. I came out and saw what the Mermex Queen had created, a memorial for the fallen Pokemon trainer, so we'd always be able to remember him. This is amazing, Mermex Queen. Thank you. Let's go traveling together. We went out to the orchard, where I hoped I might be able to find some food that would make me stronger. Instead, we just found an angry siren who didn't want to have our company. Being attacked while just going on a walk really gets me fired up. I breathed fire on the siren, defeating it, and the Mermex Queen and I continued searching for ways to get stronger. That's when we met a friendly troll, and I decided to ask him. Whoa, a talking Pokemon. That's exciting. If you want to get stronger, you can seek out Professor Oak. He's an expert when it comes to Pokemon, and I've heard he's got a clinic somewhere out in the meadows. Professor Oak? Now that sounds like an idea! I'll need all the help I can get to be strong enough to defeat the Dread Knight. Wanna come stay at my base in the meantime? Sure, that sounds like fun. We went back to my base with the troll, and I built a new room for him to stay in. I wasn't so lonely now. From day 13 to day 15, I went off into the meadows to seek out Professor Oak. If that Dread Knight guy really was after me, I needed to get evolved as quickly as possible. While traveling through the meadows, though, I got attacked by a terrifying dragon-type Pokemon, the Lightning Dragon. There's no way I'm ready to face that thing. The Lightning Dragon was heading straight towards me. I tensed up and prepared to get destroyed, when suddenly a huge energy blast struck the side of the Lightning Dragon, defeating it and saving my life. When I turned and saw who fired the energy blast, it was just a tiny little pixie. I immediately ran over to thank her. You saved me there. I'm Zozo, and I'm so grateful for the help you gave me. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. I'd always do whatever I can to help out a kind stranger. But sadly, I used up the last of my magical power to defeat that dragon. Do you think you could go and defeat the ghost-type Pokemon who's been haunting the meadow? After the way you saved me there, it's really the least I could do. I traveled further into the meadow until I saw the spooky ghost-type floating around. Thankfully, the undead hate fire, and with my fire-breathing power, I was soon able to defeat it. This ghost is toast! I then returned to the pixie to give her the good news and ask her if she knew anything about Professor Oak. Thank you for the help, Zozo. Professor Oak is out of town on a research trip at the moment, but he'll be back in a week or so. Thanks for the heads up. At least I was able to help here in the meantime. With that valuable info, I turned and started heading in the direction of my base. 
From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base, only to find it was being attacked by a deadly gorgon. I saw the friendly troll who told me about Professor Oak running at her, trying to defend the base. But it was hopeless. She destroyed him in one hit. No, Mr. Troll, you monster! I ran in to battle the Gorgon for what she'd done. I tried to hit her with my sword and my flame breath, but neither seemed to have an effect. She just laughed at me. You sad little creeper Pokemon. Is that all you've got? Wow, the Dread Knight is wasting his time even sending me to destroy you. I've got better things to do. Later, loser. With that, the Gorgon left, leaving me in the ruins of my base with another friend gone. At least I still had the Mermex Queen, and she came to comfort me. Don't worry, Zozo. We'll get back at them. And in the meantime, we'll repair the base and build back better. I took the time to extinguish the fire around my base. Then, I returned to the underground cavern, mining more materials so I could make myself some iron armor. I can't afford to be unprotected right now. By the time I got back to my base, I found something exciting. The Mermex Queen had invited over a bunch of Mermex workers. They'd not only built a whole barracks for them to all live in, they'd also built a watchtower for us to keep a lookout for any more of the Dread Knight's henchmen. I ran over to the Mermex Queen to thank her. This is amazing, Mermex Queen. It's starting to really look like a base here. You know what would make it even more like a base? A super cool statue! That's an excellent idea! And in fact, I know exactly what to build! From day 20 to day 22, I was wandering around the prairie, looking for new friends and potentially new upgrades and gear. Instead, I found an angry Dread Scuttler! I really don't want to deal with this today! I defeated the Dread Scuttler with my iron sword and proceeded to collect a bunch of blocks that I could use to start building the statue. You'll never guess what it is! On my way back through the lush red desert to my base, I found a few sheep wandering around and decided to herd them back to my base. I built a paddock to house them all. This will be perfect for gathering wool for making banners. That's when the Mermex Queen came over to me with some good news. Hey Zozo, I got started on your statue and I think it's coming along nicely. But it's gonna need those new materials you gathered next. I'll add them right away. I ran in and continued work on the statue, getting it just a little further along with the new materials I'd collected. Can you guess what it is yet? Let me know down in the comments. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the meadow, hoping that this time I'd get a chance to speak with Professor Oak. He's gotta be back from his research trip by now. Just then, from out of the grass came an Enderman, a really dangerous Dark-type Pokemon. It swiped for me with its long arms, but I dodged and drew my sword. Prepare for battle! I used my Fire Breath attack to weaken the Enderman and finished it off with an Iron Sword Strike! Before I could celebrate, two more Endermen jumped out and tried to pick up where the first one left off. I defeated them both with some difficulty. Not much later, I found a rare Ghost-type Pokemon known as a Ghast. Ghost types are weak against dark types, so it must have been hiding from all the Endermen out here. Hey, Ghast, it would be safer if you came to live at my base. There are lots of friendly Bug-type Pokemon there now. Hey, no thanks, Creeper Pokemon. This ghost haunt alone. And the ghast vanished into thin air. I guess he was serious about being alone. I went back to searching, and soon I found a man in a lab coat standing in the meadow. Are you Professor Oak? Why, yes. I am the famous Professor Oak, world-renowned Pokemon expert. And who might you be? I'm a creeper Pokemon, but I can talk. My friends call me Zozo. Well, I've certainly met talking Pokemon before, but it's always an ultra-rare occurrence. Where's your trainer, anyway? That's the problem. I don't have one right now. I was hoping since you're a Pokemon expert, you could train me so I could become stronger. I don't see why not. I've been meaning to do more research on Creeper Pokemon regardless. Let's get started. On day 27 to day 31, I trained with Professor Oak in order to increase the power of my moves in battle. I could definitely feel that my base stats were becoming stronger. You're not just an expert professor, Professor. You're an expert trainer. My work is almost done here, Zozo. You'll be a fighting machine after you complete the last challenge of your hyper training. If it means being strong enough to face the Dread Knight, I'll do whatever it takes. Very good answer. Now I will present you with your challenge. You must defeat a Wild Ravager. It is a fighting type Pokemon known for its merciless attacks. It will be a formidable foe, but if you're ready and you believe in your training, you should be able to win. I won't let you down, Professor. 
Here are some super potions that might help you recover your hearts in the battle. Thanks! I went to where the Wild Ravager could be found and took on the Professor's Challenge. Using everything I had learned so far on my journey, I battled the Ravager. It was a tough fight, and the Ravager's fighting moves were very strong. But I was strong now too, and I managed to hang in there and retaliate with some attacks of my own. I was down to low health, but I still managed to get the win. Good thing I had those super potions. From day 32 to day 35, I told Professor Oak that I had defeated the Ravager. He seemed very impressed with my progress. Very good, Zozo. You are one powerful creeper Pokemon now. Thanks, Professor. You really believed in me. And you believed in yourself, too. That's half the battle. What's the other half, Professor? Battle. Now take this League badge to prove that you've got what it takes to be a champ in the making. All right! I decided to return home to base to tell the others the good news about my training. I had made it all the way back to the Mojave Desert when I saw the gas from earlier, and they were in trouble. Help! Help! A naval gym leader is trying to capture me! Evil gym leader? That sounds like... Oh no, it is! The Dread Knight was here! I didn't expect that I'd run into him so soon! Stop running away, Ghast! I'm trying to add you to my Pokémon team! A spooky ghost type would make an excellent addition! <laughs> the Dread Knight didn't see me yet! I could sneak up on him and attack! But what if I lost? I might have earned a League badge, but he was still a gym leader! For now I have to retreat! Sorry, Ghast! If only you'd listened to me before! A little later, I was at the Oasis, still trying to find my way home, when I ran into a giant pig Pokemon, the Piglin Brute. No problem, pigs are usually normal type, so this should be a cinch. But it wasn't as easy as I expected. The Piglin Brute had so many hit points, and its attacks felt like critical hits. Oh no, am I too weak to fight this Pokemon too? I ran away from the battle and continued on for home where I thought I'd be safer. I couldn't believe that I was still so weak after all the training I did. From day 36 to day 39, I arrived home safe and sound. Except the base wasn't safe or sound. It was being attacked by the Gorgon again. Oh no, last time I fought her, I barely did any damage. We meet again, Zozo. Have you come home so you can lose to me again? No way! If I don't step up and beat you now, the Myrmex Queen and all the others will be in danger. Suit yourself. I'm going to enjoy this. We began to battle, and once again, my fire breath and sword attacks were not very effective. And that's when it hit me. Gorgon must be a rock type, and that's why she has such high defenses. But there's one way to deal with rock types, a fighting type attack like Rock Smash. I unequipped my sword and attacked with my fists like a fighting type. Somehow, it actually damaged her. What? I'm hit? Enjoy your victory while you can. You still aren't worth the trouble. Gorgon left the base. I guess my training with Oak did pay off. The Myrmex Queen approached me, looking proud. Sozo, you're back. And not a moment too soon. I just heard there was a power bracer in the lush red desert. If you could get it, you'd be able to upgrade your attack power to the next level. That sounds like just what I need. We should go find it. I took Myrmex Queen with me, and the two of us went to the lush red desert to search for the power bracer. We didn't get far before we encountered another wild cockatrice. They must be really common for fire types. There was a villager in danger of getting scorched, so I stepped in to help out, striking the cockatrice down with my sword. Thank you for protecting me. You're one friendly Pokemon. Here's a map to the beach where you can find some treasure. Gee, thanks. We said goodbye to the villager and kept searching through the desert. We found the power bracer without needing to worry about another fight. Great job, Zozo! Now let's return to base and get it equipped. I got excited and I tried the power bracer on. It fit like a glove and I could feel the power already. We went back to our base afterwards. From day 40 to day 43, the Myrmex Queen and I decided to do a little bit more traveling. That villager we saved the other day had told us about a beach where we could get treasure, and that sounded just too good to pass up. The map we were given showed us the way to where the treasure was. We decided to take a route back through the Forgotten Forest, and that's where we encountered some more ghost-type Pokémon. A horde of skeletons! Hasn't the Dread Knight been catching ghost-type Pokémon? I'll bet these are his! They can't beat us if we work together, Zozo! Together, the Myrmex Queen and I reduced the Dread Knight skeletons to a bunch of bones. With all the upgrades I had gotten, it was no sweat. It looks like there was one we missed, and it's getting away. But I guess running from stronger Pokemon is what you'd expect them to do. We made our way out of the Forgotten Forest and into a rocky beach. This must have been the place where the treasure was. 
Sure enough, there was an open mining pit with a whole bunch of diamonds, ripe for the taking! Sweet! From day 44 to day 49, I was back home at my base, doing some training exercises by myself when Mermex Queen showed up! Hi, Mermex Queen! Hi there, Zozo! I've done a bit more of my part to the statue. Do you mind adding some details to it when you get the chance? Sure! I can actually do that right now! I went to the statue and began to add some special blocks in order to really make it look good. You can almost tell what it's going to be now. It'll be really exciting when it's complete. I worked on the statue for a bit longer before I noticed that a traveling trader had come to provide us with some hyper potions for the price of some emeralds. These are some quality potions. You can trust me. Better than super potions, that's for sure. We were running very low on healing items. I didn't have any emeralds on me. But luckily, the queen had some and brought them from storage. That should do it. I bought the potions and thanked the trader for his service. The base was attacked again, right after he left by another dark Pokemon, a wither. Good things I've been practicing my fighting moves. Hiya! Take that, evildoer! The wither was defeated, but I knew I had to make sure the base was more defensible against enemy attacks. So I went and built a perimeter wall that would make it way more difficult for intruders to get in. From day 50 to day 53, I was collecting more supplies in a nearby prairie when one of the Mermex workers from the base came and found me. He told me that the Mermex queen had been captured by a Pokemon trainer. Probably not a very nice one either. The Mermex queen was a good friend to me, so I knew that I had to go search for her. But I also knew that I would need some help. I decided to go talk to the smartest person I knew, Professor Oak. He was an expert in all things Pokemon, and he might know what kind of trainer I'm looking for too. Fortunately, he happened to be close by and researching the local Pokemon. Professor, please, I need your help. What seems to be the trouble, Zozo? The Mermex Queen was captured by a Pokemon trainer, and I need to find her. Hmm, that is rather troubling. I would suggest looking for the bug catcher. He's the kind of trainer that specializes in capturing bug type Pokemon. That sounds like it's worth a shot. Thank you, Professor. The Professor had given me a clue I could use to possibly find my friend. I would save her no matter what, even if I had to fight more skeletons. Speaking of, oh boy, there were some more of the Dread Knight's ghost type skeleton Pokemon hanging around. But at this point in my journey, battling them wasn't much of a challenge. This time, I defeated every one of them all by myself. And one of them dropped another rare candy. I had better hang on to that for later. From day 54 to day 57, I was in the Mojave Desert again, searching for the bug catcher who might have captured the Mermex Queen. The bug catcher took my friend. They must be the worst. And as if on cue, the Dread Knight jumped out. I wouldn't say that. After all, they can't be worse than me. I'm the worst of the worst. Dread Knight, what are you doing here? I like tormenting you. Everyone knows that it is always best to capture a Pokemon when it's weak. Not as weak as I used to be. And now I'll show you. I gave the Dread Knight a few good hits with my sword. He didn't seem to be that hurt by it, but I could tell I was doing a bit of damage. You do have some fight. I guess I'll have to weaken you a bit more before I capture you. He countered with a strong attack that took off half of my hearts. I wasn't going to defeat him at this rate, but at least I had put a scratch on him. Time to run away! I escaped from the Dread Knight and definitely didn't want to have another fight so soon. Fortunately, I found the same friendly villager who told me about the treasure. Have you seen a bug catcher anywhere? Hmm, now that you mention it, I think he was in the prairie not too long ago. Try over there! Thanks! I went to the prairie, but I didn't find the bug catcher or the Mermex Queen. I did find a bug catching net on the ground and one of the Mermex Queen's eggs. Oh no, it's true. The bug catcher has captured my friend. I wanted to go after him, but there was no sign of which way he went or where he might be now. From day 58 to day 62, I returned to my base, frustrated by the lack of leads when it came to rescuing the Mermex Queen. The Mermex workers were worried sick about their queen. I had to set a good example, so I went mining for some stronger materials. I found more diamonds, and with these and the treasure I found on the beach, I was able to create a diamond helmet and diamond boots. With my remaining diamonds, I crafted a diamond sword to match my armor pieces. I knew they'd be much more useful if I enchanted them, so I built an enchanting area into the base so I could do just that. These diamond armor pieces will really boost my defense stats. I went back out searching for materials because items are just as important in Pokemon battles as abilities are. The underground cavern I was exploring was dark and full of rock and ground type Pokemon. It also had a hidden treasure in the form of a battle axe. 
and gave the axe a few swings, and I could already tell how strong it was. I could do some really damaging moves with this thing. The battle axe worked really well on the rock types in the area, so I know it would prove effective on Gorgon too. I returned above ground to base and found that the ghast was waiting for me. I have escaped to the Dread Knight, and I have some news for you. What kind of news? I've heard that the bug catcher is trying to become stronger so he can fight the Dread Knight. He's trying on the coast right now. That actually helps. You're welcome to haunt the base. I'll be back later to help you settle in. For now, I'm gonna go save the queen. From day 63 to day 66, I gathered my strongest equipment and items and prepared to leave. While I was still there, Professor Oak showed up. Hello, Zozo. Take this charged coal. You'll know when the right time to use this is. Thanks, Professor. I might be gone for a while, so watch the base for me until I get back. I headed off in the direction of where the bug catcher was training. Like most Pokemon trainers, bug catcher seemed to move around a lot. Hopefully, I would reach where he was before he moved on to a new region. I didn't stick around too long in any of the places I went before, but I did encounter a wither. Let's try out that charcoal. The charcoal made my fire attack stronger, and I was able to wipe out the wither in a single fire attack. Wow, Zozo! That was an impressive fire-type attack! Do you think you could help me light up the fireplace in my house? What are friends for? The villager showed me his cabin at the oasis. I lit the fireplace up so that he could get comfortable and stay warm. That was really helpful! I'll sure to be do something nice for you next time, friend! From day 67 to day 70, I found the bug catcher on the rocky beach and the Mermex Queen was with him! It looked like they were both in the middle of a Pokemon battle with the Dread Knight skeletons! Mermex Queen, I traveled all this way to save you from the bug catcher! Zozo, a friendly face! Give me a hand dealing with these skeletons! I swung my diamond sword over and over at the skeletons, destroying them one by one! I am the Creeper Pokemon! Fear me! While Mermex Queen and I battled, some of the skeletons snuck up behind the bug catcher and took him out! Well, so much for that trainer. Didn't he capture you? No, I went with him to try and train to fight Dread Knight on my own. You were training, like me? I thought I could solve your problem for you, but I'm sorry for worrying you. We're back together, and that's what matters. Nothing can keep friends like us apart. Now let's take apart the rest of these skeletons. With our combined strength, Mermex Queen and I finished off the skeletons. The last one to fall dropped a spell tag, an enchantment which gives ghost type power to items. I should use this later. From day 71 to day 74, I returned to the base with the Mermex Queen. We were greeted by Ghast, who had decided to stay after all, and had even built a place for himself. Looks like the rescue mission worked out. Sure did. The Mermex workers have their queen back now, and it looks like the base is now feeling a lot more like home. Thank you for letting me live here, even though I said I didn't want to at first. Do you want to see the place I built? Sure thing. The gas took me to his ghost-type Pokemon room. It was full of spooky things and sort of made me want to eat candy. This looks awesome! Professor Oak has also decided to move his research lab into the base. You should go see! Sure enough, Professor Oak had created a place for himself inside the base. I'm going to get so much work done here. Your base is very advanced, Zozo. Wow, everyone has really stepped up their crafting game. I'd better do the same. I went mining for some more diamonds to complete my set of diamond armor and tools. I used the spell tag that the skeletons dropped to enchant my diamond sword with ghost-type energy called Lifesteal. When it was finished, I went to the outside of the base where the villager was waiting for me. Hey, Zozo! I decided I'd come over and say hello! Hi, villager! From day 75 to day 78, I followed the villager back to his cabin at the oasis. I had a feeling he was going to repay me for that time I helped him. Here, Zozo, I have a gift for you because you've been so nice to me. I knew it! I mean, thanks! It's a moonstone. Try holding it and see how your power evolves. Oh, super awesome! I held the moonstone and instantly learned some more powerful moves to use in battle. I went outside and battled a few cockatrice to test out my powers. My fire breath had leveled up into a fire blast attack. Even fire types can't take the heat now. From day 79 to day 84, I made some minor improvements to the base. Now that everyone was calling it home, I had to make sure that everyone was taken care of. There were some spare materials lying around, so I crafted a set of iron armor for the Mermex Queen. Wow, thanks Zozo. I guess I'm a bug type and a steel type now. You've always helped me in battle, but now you'll have stronger defenses for when we fight the Dread Knight's stronger minions. I'll do my best in our next battles. Thank you for thinking of me. 
After I finished talking with the Mermex Queen, I realized that improving the base had left me short of some key materials, so I went searching for them. While I was out in the rose fields, I encountered a familiar, unfriendly face. It was the Gorgon! Your armor and weapons have changed, but you're still weak. What do you know, Gorgon? I know a lot more than you do about everything, including what Dread Knight is going to do next. What is he going to do next? He'll become a Pokemon Master, of course. An evil Pokemon Master. Once he's done trying to capture weaklings like you. You can call me weak all you want, Gorgon, but I don't need to prove anything to you. I'm going home. From day 85 to day 89, I left the Rose Field and returned to my base, where the Dread Knight was lying in wait. Gorgon told me I needed to end our little cat and mouse game. So I've come here to capture you, once and for all. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. The Dread Knight attacked with his usual opening move, but I was ready for it, so I dodged. I struck him back with my ghost enchanted diamond sword. It seemed to deal some real damage. A ghost weapon? Well, that's new. Guess I don't need to hold back. His next strike was a brand new move I had never seen before. It left me completely defenseless. Oh no, what should I do? Then I remembered I was still carrying the charged coal that Professor Oak gave me. Maybe if I used it correctly, I could evolve. The last time I needed a rare candy for that, and I have one. I know, I'm gonna use them both at once. I activated the rare candy and the charged coal together, and suddenly I evolved into a brand new creeper Pokemon form with 80 hearts. Evolution, and so strong as well. I believe we have a battle to finish. Some other time, Zozo. The Dread Knight deployed his skeleton minions and ran away, but I was eager to test out my new powers on the Horde. I had a new signature move called Falling TNT, which dropped exploding TNT blocks on enemy Pokemon. Those skeletons were dust, and the base was completely safe. From day 90 to day 94, Mermax Queen had almost completed the statue that she had been building the entire time. Wow, it's amazing, Mermex Queen! It'll be even more amazing after you add the finishing touches. I have confidence that you'll make this statue look as incredible as I know it will. No pressure. It took a lot of materials, and I had to mine for more several times. But in the end, the statue stood triumphantly over the base. It was a statue of Arceus, the mightiest and most ancient creator god of all Pokemon. I am humbled to be in your presence, Arceus. Next on my list of things to do was help Professor Oak become stronger so that he could help me fight against the Dread Knight. I decided to give him a potion of strength. Thank you. And speaking of potion, you should go get some more healing potions from that merchant. We have a few more emeralds, and that should be enough to seal the deal. Good idea, Professor! This time, I purchased Max Potions, the strongest form of healing potion available! From day 95 to day 97, I went back to the Rose Fields where I met Gorgon that one time. Her taunting distracted me, so I wasn't able to search the whole biome for materials. Uh-oh, it looks like some other ghost types are here. Zombie Pokemon! There were zombies everywhere! But because ghost types were actually weak against other ghost type attacks, my ghostly diamond sword was the perfect weapon to thin them out. That's right, shamble away! I continued to use ghost type attacks on the ones that got into melee range and used my falling TNT attacks to reduce their numbers. Eventually, I had defeated or driven away all the zombies in the rose field. When the battle was over, I noticed there was a special sword stuck into a stone. It was a netherite sword, and it was charged with even more ghostly power than my diamond sword. Oh, this is just what I was looking for! I took the sword with me and began to walk home to my base. On day 98, I was confronted by Gorgon just outside of my base. This stops now, Creeper Pokemon Zozo. You have gone from a minor annoyance to the one thing that is stopping Dread Knight from becoming a Pokemon Master. I'm going to end you here and now for his sake. Well, it was nice knowing you, Gorgon. What? I'm feeling like a one-hit KO! I drew my fighting battle axe, knowing it would be super effective against Gorgon, and with one single slash, I defeated her! Critical hit! Now that I'd defeated Gorgon, I knew the battle with Dread Knight would be coming, so I built the perimeter wall a bit higher and gathered my max potions. 
Has the time arrived for you to face your destiny, Zozo? I don't know about destiny, but I'm definitely ready to take down the Dread Knight. Then allow me to come with you. That way I can record what a fully evolved creeper Pokemon looks like at its most powerful. After you win, of course. And I will! The professor and I left the base, and soon we were on the road to the Dread Knight's evil Pokemon Gym! This had been quite a journey, and if you want to see more of my adventures, remember to search ZOZO -Z -O to find more videos and subscribe so you can always know when I upload next! On day 99, we arrived at the Red Rock Highlands, which is where we found the Dread Knight's evil Pokemon Gym! The challenge will begin as soon as we enter his lair. Are you still ready to face him, Zozo? From the moment I spawned into this world, I knew I'd have to fight. I'm ready as ever, Professor. And let's head inside. Suddenly, the Professor and I were ambushed by more of the ghost-type skeletons! Not these guys again! They surrounded us! These must have been the highest level Pokémon that the Dread Knight has! I could handle them myself, but Professor Oak was a professor, not a Pokemon! He was in serious trouble! Go on, Zozo. This may look like a troublesome situation, but I'm Professor Oak. I've seen far more rare and dangerous Pokemon than this and survived. The only thing that is different this time is that I don't want to slow you down. Professor! Go! I'll manage somehow! Go defeat Dread Knight. He must not become an evil Pokemon master. I didn't want to leave the professor, but I could tell that he was serious. So I braced myself and ran directly into the gym where I would soon come face to face with the Dread Knight. On day 100, I was face to face with the Dread Knight. Oh, it's you, Zozo. No more running, Dread Knight. For either of us, no matter who wins or loses, this will be the last battle that we ever have. I'm not backing down. <laughs> a Pokemon cannot hope to stand against a master. I will show you the true meaning of fear. You don't have a ghost of a chance against me. No more puns, either. We clashed weapons, and I was glad that I brought my netherite sword. It was the perfect weapon to use in this battle. I was able to make the Dread Knight move back out from melee range and launch my fire blast attack. Now that had to hurt. It's not very effective, you foolish creeper Pokemon. Rats! I thought I had him! I'm going to use my own signature move now. See if you can dodge it. The Dread Knight created a Shadow Ball even more powerful than his skeleton guards, and he launched it straight at me. I dodged out of the way, knowing that one hit from that would KO me. Say good night, Zozo. Get it? Because I'm a knight. That's your worst pun yet, Dread Knight. It was Professor Oak. He had come to help. He threw a Pokeball, and instantly it absorbed the Dread Knight's power. Now's your chance, Zozo. He could only use that move by becoming a ghost type himself. Strike him down. Right. Take this, Dread Knight. I delivered the final blow with my Netherite Sword. With the battle finally over, I was a free Pokemon. Oh, I guess Professor Oak would be able to come up with quite the Pokedex entry for this creeper Pokemon.